Hey everybody, Steve Scott with Connect Up, your companion study to come follow me. Welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is big picture, small picture. You might notice right away that uh, we're missing somebody. So today we're going to excuse Chelsea because we got a lot going on in our family life. And um, you know what it's like. How many of you out there are like mom, children, and we, we homeschool our kids? For the past couple of years we've homeschooled, we got a lot going on as we begin September. So uh, um, excuse Chelsea, would you? Um, she sends her love. But welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson, we are doing Helaman 7 through 12, and we are doing September 2nd through the 8th. You guys got your scriptures out? You ready to roll? Thank you to everyone last week who was like super patient, all the people who commented. I am so grateful for all of you. Um, I sent, when I sent out the emails, I got a few messages back that were super kind. So I have two shout outs to two people with the last name Johnson, but they're not even related. I don't think, because one lives in Arizona and one lives somewhere else, which I don't know. So I don't know if they're related. So this is a shout out to Marianne Johnson and to Sharon Johnson. So Sharon Johnson, I know is from Arizona. So Sharon, here, and to Marianne, here's your fist bump, boom, and your high five, whoa bam. Okay, today, um, Grab your scriptures, would you? Grab your scriptures, your journals, and your scripture markers. We're going to connect up. And we're going to jump right, right into the scriptures today. Um, I think, as you guys have watched over the past few months, like the shifting in the Scott family, as we've moved and we make all these adjustments and missionaries have gone out, that there's a lot of change. Have you guys gone through that too in your life? So today, um, I haven't taught by myself on here for a long, long time. So I'm gonna, it's a bit of an adjustment for me again, but I'm super excited to be able to share some things. And in my ramblings, here's what I hope to have happen. I hope that you are taking your own time in your own personal scriptures. I hope you're reading and studying and looking at things on your own and then coming to be supplemented and to look at things. I hope if you're a teacher, teaching Sunday school or seminary, gospel doctrine, if home, if you're teaching at home with little kids and teenagers, I hope that you take some of the principles that I'm going to teach you today and then really kind of adapt them into what's going to work really well for you. That's the, really the hope because if you, uh, if you try to teach like everybody else, it, it just doesn't work. I love Come Follow Me because it's so adaptable. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take the example of a big picture and a small picture. Let me explain. Um, have you guys ever seen a, a gigapan picture? I know that sounds so weird, it's like this foreign language. But there's this picture that can be taken by a really specialized camera that's called a gigapan picture. And what it does is it has these big, beautiful landscape views. But because of the clarity and the pixels in the, in the picture, you can zoom in really close, like scary close, like you, like so scary close that you would, like you don't want to get any closer to this face. You know what I mean? Like it's like crazy. Like you could be on the one of the tallest towers in New York City and like zoom all the way out in the Hudson River and like see the Statue of Liberty and see boats out there and see outlines of people. It's crazy. Or it's just incredible. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, as we take a big picture look and as we study scriptures, like the Book of Mormon, the Bible, as we study, we look at a big picture. And at times, I want you to take the big picture, like the eternal view, and really get far out and be like, well, what's the eternal consequences of such behavior and thoughts? Sometimes in the Book of Mormon, though, I want you to take the big picture and I want you to make it smaller. Like, take it and condense it. Um, because we get into stories in the Helaman. The Book of Mormon is so full of stories. Doctrine and Covenant is so full of history. I want you to take, like, the big picture. Now, in teaching, remember, here's your screen, here's the look at the, the board today, okay? So big picture, small picture. As we are looking at the big picture, it's the story that we find in Helaman chapter 7 through 12. There's a story. It's actually a fascinating story. And we get Nephi the prophet, we get all these events that happen. Now, one of the tender sort of mistakes that I feel teachers can make or parents can make or we can we can do is we stay so much in the big picture, like the story. So here's big picture. It's story, events, and people. It's the, so what did Nephi do next? And who is this Nephi? 
And who is he related to? And is it Helaman or is it Nephi or is it like which Mormon like and people how many of you guys raise your hand and if you get lost in those things? Just raise your hand. I know I can't see you, but raise your hand anyway. If you're driving, both hands on the steering wheel. Um, but if you think about it, you'd be like, how many of you sat in a gospel doctrine class and been like, I actually don't know. Sometimes, even now in my life, with people that I sit in a gospel doctrine class and they'll be like, uh, so what's the genealogy here, Brother Scott? And I was like, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. But I do know <clears throat> kind of the basic story, like the storyline. And so in the big picture, the big picture in these stories, they're not life-saving. They're not the kind that you walk away from being like, whoa, wow, I'm going to start praying on a garden tower. That was incredible. Um, but they are the kind of stories that have a big picture. So let's just look at the big picture, and then I'm going to invite you to look at small picture today. Now, small picture is like principles and things that, like, there's so many different lessons that can be taught. And one of the things teachers can do is stay, like, briefly in big picture, just really briefly, and then go into the small picture and, and let your classes and your kids and the teenagers really start digging out like these small little parts that are just like these little tiny puzzle pieces to the whole story. And uh, as that puzzle gets together, you go, wow, that is just beautiful. Okay, make sense? Okay, so grab your scriptures, your journals, scripture markers. We're writing, and we're connected. Okay, so let's look at big picture. So big picture looks like this. It's the story of the events of people. In, in Helaman, okay, we get Nephi, we get a tower, we get prayer, praying. Nephi is so upset with what's going on with the people that he starts offering a prayer in his garden. Now, I don't know how the Nephite civilization shut up gardens, um, but Nephi was obviously praying at a main place in his garden backyard where other people who could pass by could hear him verbally saying a prayer. Okay? Now, I know Nephi wasn't doing this to be holier than thou. He wasn't doing it in a way that he could just express things and make other people hear it. It wasn't some plan that Nephi could just share. Like, I don't know all the details, and that's why we can't get lost in it. But he was praying in the garden, and then all of a sudden he makes a, people come, and they're like, who do you think you are? And Nephi's like, oh, you're wicked. And he's like, but just so you know, he makes a prophecy. He says, the chief judge is dead. He's there. Um, if you don't believe me, go find him. Five guys take off, they go to find him, and that's where we get murder. Okay, so there's murder in Zarahemla. And everyone's like, oh my goodness. And Nephi, being the prophet, and these five guys run, they get arrested. And so they go to jail. And then we learn of the betrayal. And this is a great story. And you could read the whole thing and be like, wow, what on earth does it have to do with me? Big picture, what we can see is, oh, and then in the other chapters, we get Nephi. I feel like that, like that weatherman who's like, today in the news, um, also Nephi gets the ceiling power, and there's famine, and he gets the ceiling power. Brother Scott, what's the ceiling power? It's that whatever he connects on heaven connects on earth, and whatever he seals in heaven seals on earth, and it's amazing, and he calls out famines, and everyone's like, wow, and you walk away from gospel doctrine being like, I feel highly unnourished. But here's the big principle. The prophet will will reveal God's word. Period. That's a big picture. First Nephi, or Helaman chapter 7 through 12 is the prophet will reveal God's will. That's the big picture. We got it? Write it down. Write it down in your journal. Write it down in your scriptures. Um, I just saved you from reading. Just kidding. I told you in the beginning. You got to read. So now we get to go to small picture. Small picture is where we take things and we condense it, like look at the small things, and we pull out tiny principles. For example, there's more details, there's more principles. Here's a principle. Miracles strengthen faith. They do not produce it. In this moment that Nephi prophesies that the chief judge has been murdered, they go and see it. And I want you to see what happens. That's a miracle, isn't it? How many of you would be like, what the... I mean, but we don't really get an opportunity to go question a prophet and be like, so uh, show me a miracle. And uh, that would be really weird. And I almost sounded like a, like a Western shootout right there. All right, partner, show me a miracle. And, uh, but we don't get a chance to do that because the principle. 
Miracles strengthen faith in Jesus Christ. They don't produce it. Go to Helaman chapter 9, verse 4 through 5. <clears throat> Helaman chapter 9, verse 4 through 5. Some people ask me, they're like, Steve, we're, like I've been reading, I've been reading my, my digital scriptures a ton um, because I found on there that there was a, uh, uh, a streak app part of there. Streak meaning like how many days in a row I could read the scriptures and keep count of it. And so I've been streaking on my phone. And um, I've just been keeping track of how many days I've been recording it. So oftentimes my notes are there. And today I came back to the caveman edition. So let's go to Helaman chapter 9, verses 4 through 5. How many days do you think I have a streaking on my phone? I'll let you guess. Okay. <clears throat> After the messengers go to see the chief judge, and he's dead on the judgment seat, um, it says, Now behold, when they saw this, they were astonished. Okay, I think that's a bit of an understatement. They'd be like, whoa, exceedingly, insomuch that they fell to the earth, for they had not believed the words which Nephi had spoken concerning the chief judge. But now when they saw, they believed, and fear came upon them, lest all the judgments of which Nephi had spoken should come upon the people. Therefore they did quake and had fallen to the earth. So, but... Is that a, is that, what's the difference between, we could cross-reference here and put like Alma the Younger's experience with an angel and a miracle that had happened. We could do like Nephi's bow, like we could begin to make a list of things that we've previously read. What's the major difference between this experiment that is they ran to the judgment seat not believing and then they saw it and they began to believe. Now, does this lasting like to the core I don't think I don't think it totally does. Go to chapter nine, verse twenty-four through thirty-six. I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this. Now, when you're teaching um, in your classes or at home, and you have a big section of scripture like this, a good thing would be for you to pause this and read all of twenty-four through thirty-six. Like if you and I were in a class together, it would go something like this: It'd be like, "Okay, guys, we're going to turn to chapter twenty-four through thirty-six, and what I want you to do, remember the principle in the small picture is." Miracles strengthen faith. They don't produce it. So would you please, <clears throat> on your own or with a partner, read verse 24 through 36, and then highlight anything in there that kind of that would go along with our principle, okay? So you can pause the video and do that if you want. Um, now, Nephi comes in front, of the, in front of everybody, and they're like, you, you must have set this up. And he's like, I didn't set this up. And they're like, no, you, it was you. You conspired with the person who killed it. That's how you know it happened, obviously. And he's like, no, I didn't. If you go to the house of the guy's brother, you will see him and you will ask him if he, if he killed him. And he'll say no. And then you'll look at the cloak of his coat and you'll find blood on there. And then they'll ask, hey, what is this? Is this the blood of your brother? And then you'll shake and tremble and be like, no. And then all of a sudden he goes, did you conspire with the, prophet, the man Nephi that this would happen? And he's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, and now that is the Steve Scott version paraphrased all the way down into the end, okay? <clears throat> Look at verse 34. It says, because of the fear and this plainness he'd come to his face, behold, they'll say he's guilty. <clears throat> and verse um, 36, did I do that right? 24. And then shall they say unto that I, Nephi, know nothing concerning the matter, save it were given unto me by the power of God. And then shall thou she, you know that I am an honest man, and I'm sent unto you from God. Go to verse 37. And it came to pass that they went and did even according as Nephi had said, and behold, the words which he had said were true. For according to the words he did deny, and also the words he did, the words he did confess. Um, go to verse 41. Okay, maybe I did this in the next one. Okay, so this one is don't miss the point. So you could go through this whole experience of a miracle and be like, oh my goodness. And miss, don't miss the point. So as I was reading my scriptures, I was like, that's a pretty crazy story, actually. But faith is not created by miracles. It's strengthened. So look in verse 40 and 41. <clears throat> now there were some among them who said that Nephi was a prophet. They would be correct. And there was others who said, behold, he's a god. Notice the lowercase g. For except he was a god, he could not know of all these things. For behold, he told us of the thoughts of our heart, and also told us of the things, and even had brought unto our knowledge the true murder of our chief judge. Don't miss the point. 
Nephi wasn't telling this story or sharing this experience or allowing, revealing this to make Nephi look like he was any better than anybody else. Only that he was a prophet sent from God. Sometimes in looking at a miracle or getting into that point, you might miss the point. And don't miss the point. And remember our big picture thing? Our big picture principle is the prophet will reveal God's will. Reveal God's will. That's the big picture. And um, do you remember last week we talked about and thus we see? Because in the scriptures, the next part, it says this. <clears throat> Blessings will come. Actually, I think it's the last one. We'll get to it. Where Nephi will say, and thus we see. Thus we see. Don't miss the point. How many of you guys have ever um, had a really spiritual experience and then had someone else have a spiritual experience the exact same place, the exact same time, and then when you compared them, they weren't the same? You're like, oh, really? I, did, I felt a little different, and it was this way. Heavenly Father gives us these small little pictures where we can go, oh. And understanding the will of God through his prophet. So, what I have a question for you. It's in the journal. Like, what has the prophet's message been to the world? If you were to look back on President Nelson's talks over the, over his his being the prophet, what has been the message that he has repeatedly given over and over and over again? I think you know, but maybe you should go back and look at it. Don't miss the point. Because it's not about. I love President Nelson's talk when he's talking about peacemakers needed. <clears throat> and he said, at this point, you might be thinking, this talk would be really good for someone you know. Or like, I'm paraphrasing, but you know what I mean? Never laugh. laughed. And he's like, no, 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 it's for you. Don't miss the point. Now, you might, in your scriptures, put a different principle, and I hope you do. And maybe you can share it in the comment section with me so that it makes sense. Okay, so let's, um, let's go to this next one. Blessings will still come even when life is not easy. So Nephi goes through, or he goes through this whole experience. Nephi goes through this whole experience. And then he goes back home, and that's rough. Like, that's rough to have all these people, like, talking about it and ganging up on you and calling you a liar. And Nephi has all these things, and he comes back, and he's, like, totally weighed down in his calling. Like, it's just heavy. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine. Like, <clears throat> I watch our bishop, and I think, man, he just, like, it's just heavy. Like, callings that are heavy. And Nephi comes back, and we're going to go to chapter 10, verses 2 through 4. And it came to pass that Nephi went away towards his own house, pondering upon the things which the Lord had showed him. And it came to pass, as he was thus pondering, being much cast down because of the wickedness of the people of the Nephites, their secret words of darkness, their murdering, their plundering, and all manner of iniquities, it came to pass that as he was thus pondering in his heart, behold, a voice came came unto him, saying, Blessed art thou, Nephi, for those things which thou hast done. For I have beheld how thou hast with unweariness declared the word which I have given unto thee, unto the people, and thou hast not feared them, and hast not sought thine own life, but hast sought my will, and to keep my commandments. And now, because thou hast done this thing with such unweariness, behold, I will bless thee forever. The principle that I wrote down, now, we know at this point Nephi receives what's called the sealing power, okay? And we could talk about that, but that, like, that's big picture stuff. And today we're going we're gonna to focus on little picture. I hope you are okay with that. But, like, blessings will come at the hardest part of our life. Don't miss it. And the blessings sometimes come when it feels heavy. And uh, I love this, that he was pondering, pondering, sitting there, feeling it. And then he felt and heard a voice. And the blessings will come. Um, there's, a, there's a talk given, or uh, even a Mormon message that was uh, by Elder Iron called Mountains to Climb. And it's so good. And it talks about, like in those parts, like, we all have mountains to climb. I'm so grateful for prophets, and I'm so grateful that we can read these things in the scriptures so that we understand that, like, the hardest parts of our life, that the greatest blessings can still come. 
Have you ever had that? Did I have? Um, <clears throat> so I have a couple questions. Well, yeah, this doesn't go along with what I even said at all, but I'll ask the question. Like, what miracles have strengthened your faith, and what has the Lord been doing to get your attention? Um, <clears throat> so the last one is, is the Lord trying to get your attention? That's the small picture principle that I picked out. Go to chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Okay, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Um, and thus we can behold. This is where Nephi does and thus we see part, okay? It says, and thus we can behold how false and also the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. Yea, we can see that the Lord in his great infinite goodness doth bless and prosper them who put his, our, his, their faith in him. Yea, and thus we may see at the very time when he does prosper his people, yea, in the increase of their fields, their flocks, and their herds, and gold, and silver, and every and manner of precious things of every kind and art, sparing their lives and delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies, that they should did not declare war against them. He lists all of these things, okay, that they do harden their hearts and do forget the Lord their God and do trample under their feet the Holy One, yea, and this because of their ease and their exceedingly great prosperity. And thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions, yea, except he doth visit them with death and terror and with famine, and with all manner of pestilence, they will not remember him. How is the Lord trying to get our big picture attention? And how is the Lord trying to get the little picture attention, like your own personal attention? Like, what's he doing? Do you notice that? Like maybe, maybe you should sit and ponder for a second and be like, how is the Lord trying to get my attention? And am I listening to what he is saying? A few years ago, before President Nelson was, he was a member of the Quorum of the Twelve, um, he came to a meeting and I sat in that meeting <clears throat> and he asked about like the essentials and non-essentials of the church. I remember the training so vividly clear because it was amazing. And as he was talking, he's like, what are some things that we could never take away from the church of Jesus Christ? And if we did, it would no longer be the church of Jesus Christ. And I <clears throat> raised my hand and I said, well, families, for one, like we can't take away families. And he goes, wait, why did you say that? And I was like, oh my goodness, why is he asking me a question? Like I about panicked, like the blood left my head and I was ready to pass out. And I was like, it was shortly after he had given a talk about families and he shared the wife, like the story of his wife, Danzel, and how she had passed away. It was a few, quite a few years ago. And I said, well, you said that in general conference. And he said, what did I say? And I said, well, you said that this, and you said this, and you said that we should this. And I quoted him to him. There was nothing more nerve-wracking in my whole life than quoting an apostle to an apostle, to the very man who wrote the talk. I was, oh. Guys, like, I was literally, like, falling apart in my insides. Um, like, and he looked at me, and he's like, very good. You can sit down. I was like, oh, I'm sitting down. And then he told the whole group, he's like, prophets do not say things just to say things. And I was like, wow. And I was super glad that I had studied his talk and studied General Conference and the words of the prophets. I'm also grateful at that very, after that very point in my life, that was probably like the hardest part of my life and up until that point. Like it just seemed like I was pulling a handcart through the Wyoming Plains in the middle of a snowstorm. But the, the learning and the education that came, so the principle is like, um, blessings will still come even when life is not easy, but is the Lord trying to get your attention? Um, and if he is, you might want to ask him why. Um, Nephi is living in a world where people are super distracted. And the prophet at this point in Helaman, the book of Helaman, is asking for us to see the hand of the Lord when things are good. So that he doesn't have to rattle our cage, that he, we can be instruments in his hand. That's my challenge for you this week is to not only look for the little pictures of things, but to ask yourself the question, is the Lord trying to get my attention? And this question is, what has the Lord been doing? 
Are there challenges that are coming? Are there things that are happening? Just take a look at it. You'll notice that now you could literally take a whole like hour and a half to two hours, three hours, the whole week looking at small picture principles. Writing them in your journal, sharing them with others, really sharing them with your family, sharing them in your classes. If I was a teacher, <clears throat> I would have kids write down, people, adults, write down their small picture principles, share them with people, allow them to really share. I would love it, love it, if you could write these in the comment section, your, your things that you learned as you read this week. Again, I don't mean like I'm just saying it on YouTube and, and you guys are like, yeah, that'd be nice, but I'm not gonna write it in the comment section. And if you don't, like write it in your journal, share it with someone else, but if you could, just for me, write it in the comment section. Just write it down there, okay? It helps me, it helps Chelsea, it helps so many people around the world. And I hope you'll, you'll be able to see the big picture and the small picture this week. And uh, <clears throat> I just love you guys. I love you to death. And uh, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you and all the messages and the people that are in this community of people. Um, my challenge for you this week is to like this video, just boop, like it, share this video with someone, boop, and then comment, down below, okay? And also for the word of the week, the W-O-T-C, word of the week, I said that wrong. Okay, so the word of the week this week is big, B-I-G, okay? Because I want you to think bigger. I want you to think bigger, I want you to feel, I want you to think deeper, but I want you to think bigger. I had a good friend share with me this week. I said, do you have any advice or any thoughts? She's like, think bigger. See, think bigger. And I've spent a lot of time pondering that one and praying and being, what can I do that would be more impactful for the kingdom of God? What can I do around me? Like, what's a bigger picture that I can share? And in that, I've gotten smaller picture answers. That's personal. Um, I love you guys. I invite you to write that in the, in the comment section down below. And I will see you next week as we study Come Follow Me. Okay? Love you. Bye.